Thank you so much. What, what an incredible honor it is to be here to share this stage with so many people, with Erica. If, uh, if her talk didn't give you chills, I suggest you ask the person next to you to check your pulse. Just, just incredible. I had an opportunity yesterday to practice my speech in one of our 11th grade English classes. And, uh, and the kid, kids are just amazing. And so I felt it went really well. And, and af afterwards, I asked them, I said, well, do you have any advice? And one of the boys says, he says, well, if you get nervous, just picture everybody in their underwear. <laughs> and that made me wonder two things. The first is, why did he think that would help me with being nervous? <laughs> and the second was, does he know my mom is in the audience? <laughs> but it's been an amazing week for me getting ready for this speech. But, but at home, another amazing thing happened. My, my oldest daughter turned three this week. And yeah, when we're talking oldest with turning three, that's a relative term. Uh, but, but three years ago, she came into this world knowing how to do virtually nothing. And in three short years, less time, by the way, than it takes to complete high school, she's learned to walk and talk. She can sing and dance. She knows her ABC. She knows the ABC song. She can count to 10. Actually, she counts to 20, but one through 10 are in the correct order. She knows all the Disney princesses, including a few that I didn't even know existed. Snow White's her favorite, or Tiana, depending when you ask. She knows when to say please, when to say thank you. She knows how to find her favorite Rihanna song on my iPhone. But never once, never once did my wife and I sit her down, write an objective up on the board, and say, this is what you're going to learn today. So why do we do that to our students? Why do we take the passion out of learning? My daughter took her very first step, and we cheered. Why do we applaud for our students after a football game, but not after a math class? Why do we give standing ovations after kids give a musical performance, but not after they turn in an essay? Is it because our focus is in the wrong place? It was Victor Hugo who said that nothing is more important than an idea whose time has come. The idea of compulsory education was a powerful one, and it remains a powerful idea. But it's the execution of the idea that needs a little bit of tweaking. No longer are our teachers the only ones with the information. As we've heard today, not with the internet and YouTube and Wikipedia, literally right in the palms of our hands. Not with Web 2.0 allowing us to connect with anyone, nearly anywhere. A principal whom I admire says, I don't want teachers who say, I teach math. I want teachers who say, I teach students math. But I think we need to take it a step further. I think we can say, let's get out of the way of our students and allow them to have powerful ideas. Let's make ideas the focus. Let's allow our students to be innovative every single day. Earlier today, Jade said that innovation is the bringing of creative ideas to the market. In education, we spend a lot of time talking about teacher collaboration. What if instead of those teachers focusing on grading policies and common assessments, what if instead they were brainstorming about ways for their kids to be innovative? What if instead of writing lesson plans about math or English or science, they were saying, how can I use math today to have my kids be innovative? In what ways could my students use science to be innovative? What if we challenged our students every single day to be designers? To design is to plan or conceive in the mind. Our students plan, they choreograph dance productions, they produce newscasts. They plan ways to serve the needy, help their community, improve their schools. They do this all the time. But in the classroom, everything is designed for them. From the curriculum, to the assessments, to the books they read. Uh, Dustin earlier talked about these teenagers designing amazing things. Recently in England, a 17-year-old designed an app that Yahoo bought for reportedly $30 million. No, 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 sorry. He wasn't 17 when he designed it. He was 15. He sold it when he was 17. Which leads us to entrepreneurs. What if students got to be entrepreneurs every single day? This doesn't have to be in the business sense, starting businesses, striving to make millions of dollars. It could. But what if they had the chance to cultivate their entrepreneurial spirit, 
the spirit of organizing, managing, taking on risk and initiative? What if a student's grade involved their willingness to take on risk, their willingness to fail, to collaborate with others to find out what went well, what went wrong, what do we need to improve? What would that look like? And what would they strive for? And finally, let's let our kids be artists every single day. You don't have to be a musician or a sculptor or a painter to be an artist. An artist expresses their creative skill and imagination. Ask any boxing fan whether or not Muhammad Ali was an artist. I'll bet they tell you yes. Ask any basketball fan whether or not Michael Jordan was an artist. I'll bet they tell you yes. What if we allowed our students to be artists every single day? to be creative and imaginative inside the classroom. Ideas, innovation, design, entrepreneurship, arts. What if that was the focus of our schools, of our educational system? What would that look like? Would we still tell students to be quiet, sit still, Put your phone away. Do your own work. Learn this. Memorize this. This is important. How many of you are parents of school-aged kids? Raise your hand. How many of you had school-aged kids? I'll bet at some point you asked them, what did you learn at school today? What if that conversation changed? What if instead you asked them, were you innovative today? Did you design anything today? Tell me what you created today. How were you an artist today? Did you have any cool ideas today? Another question that I got from one of those kids in the classroom, and this was really amazing. She said, so what are you going to do next? She finished my speech, and she said, what now? What are you going to do next? I didn't know. I didn't know. But on Monday, I'm going to go back, and I'm going to tell her that I did this. I'm going to tell her that I took her question, and I asked you. What are you going to do next? Thank you.